Hi, my name is Thomas and I'm a licensed irrigator here in the state of Texas. Today we're going to be talking about winterizing your irrigation system. And for those of you in the extreme northern part of the state, where the freeze line is below 6 to 8 inches, you'll need to contact a licensed irrigator in your area who can come and blow air through the piping and then eliminate any water from the system. But for the vast majority of Texans, winterizing your irrigation system is as easy as turning off the controller and protecting the backflow prevention assembly. So. Let's go ahead and get started. First thing you want to do is find your controller. It's usually located inside the garage or a basement, perhaps outside on a wall or a fence. Once you've found it, turn it to the off position. For those of you with a smart controller or a smart device, you may be able to do this from your phone. For the interest of water conservation, you should really turn your controller off through the months of November through February. But depending on how much precipitation we've had over the winter months, that could be as long as even into March or perhaps early April. Whenever you do turn your system back on, make sure to follow the schedule provided by your water supplier. If your water supplier doesn't provide a schedule, a typical rule of thumb is that the lawn requires up to one inch of water per week. Now that we've got our controller off, let's go ahead and find our backflow prevention assembly so we can drain it of any water. Today we're working with a pressure vacuum breaker, known in the industry as a PVB. You're probably wondering, what is this thing and why do I even need it? Well, almost everyone's yard has some sort of pet or animal fecal material, pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers in it. Anytime it rains or an irrigation event occurs, water tends to mix with these substances and puddle around the sprinkler heads. Water then could seep back into the irrigation system and in the event of a backflow event such as a city mainline breaking or perhaps a fire down the road, the water in the irrigation system could be siphoned back into the house for you and your family to drink or shower with. This device protects the water supply and prevents that from happening, keeping you, your family, and your neighbors safe. Now, there should be an isolation valve in between the PVB and the water meter. It's been required to install on all new sprinkler systems installed after January 1st of 2009, but even before that, it was a common practice for professional irrigators to install one of these valves. Now that we've located our isolation valve in between the water meter and the backflow prevention assembly, go ahead and remove the lid from the isolation valve box. If it's a ball valve, turn the handle 90 degrees until the water shuts off. If it's a gate valve, like the hose bibs on your house, simply rotate the handle until it no longer turns to shut the water off. There will be an arrow indicating which direction the water is flowing. On this particular assembly, the water is flowing in this direction. Now we're going to take a screwdriver to slowly open the test cocks and drain the water out of the assembly. Be careful because you may get a bit wet during this process. It may take a couple of seconds for the water to completely drain out of the pipes. Now that the water is completely drained from the assembly, turn the two test cocks to a 45 degree angle. Turn the two isolation valves to 45 degree angles. This will prevent any water stuck inside the ball valves from freezing and cracking the pipe. You should also wrap the pipe in insulation that you can find at any irrigation supply store or most hardware stores. And there's also a special bag that you can purchase that slips right over the top of the assembly. That's pretty much it. For the vast majority of us here in Texas, that's all it takes to winterize your irrigation system. And don't forget to check out our video on how to turn your system back on next spring.